Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, count vowel strings in ranges. So I'll briefly go over the description, but I think it's easier just to really focus on the example. The idea here is we're given an array of strings like these. That's the first input that we're given. And the second input that we're given is a bunch of queries. Each query, so let's say a zero, a two, basically means that for the strings that we have here, this query is asking for this subarray, this like sub array of strings, how many of these strings satisfy a specific condition? Thankfully, that condition is actually very, very simple in this case. Basically, they want to know for, let's say, example, this word, A, B, A, does this word start and end with a vowel? When I say that, I see a and end. And I know I'm saying the exact same thing, but it's two different words. Don't blame me for that. Thank the English language. So the last character has to be a vowel and the first character has to be a vowel as well. So the first word does satisfy that. The second word is uh, over here, B, C, B. And the third word is E, C, E. Reminds me of electrical and computer engineering. But anyways, okay, so this word here does not start with a vowel and it does not end in a vowel either. So don't include this word, but this word does begin and end with a vowel. So we have two words in this range and thus the answer to this query is going to be two. And basically all we wanna do is just answer all of the queries. So let me now blow up the example. So you can see that in this example, the answer to that query was two. And so for each of these queries, we wanna know the answer and then we would just wanna populate an array of values for it. So for this query, one through four, that's going to be, I believe, this. And you can see this one does not satisfy that. This one does. This one does. And this one technically does as well. It's only a single character, but it is a vowel. By the way, the vowel set they also give to us. This is a vowel A, I, or A, E, I, O, U. So there's five vowels. It's pretty easy to check if a word begins and ends with a vowel. We can just check the first character and the last character and then just do a quick lookup. You could throw these into a hash set or you could just have an array. I mean, scanning through an array of length five isn't going to be super inefficient. So it really doesn't matter in my humble opinion, but it's up to you. This kind of solution is going to be O of N for every query. We might have to go through the entire input. To check if a word is a vowel, I mean, we can do that in constant time, but how many queries are we going to have? Let's say there's m queries, thus the overall time complexity is going to be n times m. Can we do better? Obviously, there's repeated work. I mean, I probably don't have to tell you that, but I'll tell you it anyway. This query asks, check how many of these are vowels. And this query asks, check how many of these our vowels. So among these two sub problems, there's already some repeated work. Would it be possible for us just to check if every single word was a vowel only a single time? Is there some kind of solution to that? Perhaps. And then uh, lastly, we got this query one one. So I think that's this one. Basically, this problem is about range queries. There's several problems that fall into this category of like prefix slash suffix problems. Let me kind of show you one that's very, very trivial. And honestly, that problem pretty much just gives you all the intuition for this problem as well. If you uh, go to neat code IO, which I've already mentioned a million times, if you'd like search for the range in the neat code all list, there's a few problems. I think this one, if you're like a very much a beginner, this easy one will be a good one. And this next one, is pretty similar to the previous one. They both kind of fall into that prefix uh, category. And so pretty good video explanation, code explanation in most languages. So uh, the idea is going to be, like I said, prefix suffix queries. For us to be able to answer a specific query, we don't necessarily know that that query is going to go all the way up until the end of the array. If it's going to be from the beginning, it could be somewhere like in the middle. How do we do it? Well, this is how we're going to create an array that's roughly the same size as this, except it's going to have one additional uh, spot at the end. And so for each of these, we're going to determine, is it valid or not? Like, is this a word that we're going to count? So we can see that this begins and ends with a vowel. So we'll do a one over here. This one does not. So you might think, well, we'll put a zero here. Then we'll put a one here. We'll put a one here and then a one here and then a zero here. But this doesn't really tell us a lot. 
What we want to do is be able to answer a query like this one in constant time. How could you do it? Well, if you were just going to have like the prefix uh, counts, suppose something like this, or, or rather, let's say this value tells us how many of these were prefixes, that'd be nice, but it's actually not enough if the query we want to answer doesn't actually begin at the beginning. But if we also had this prefix count stored here, well, then we could answer this query by taking this value and subtracting it from that value. And that's exactly what we're going to do. There's just one tiny little thing. And you might be wondering, why did I add a second spot or rather one extra spot? It's mainly because what if we did have a query that starts from the beginning? Well, then we would take this value, subtract it not from this value, but the value over here. But there is no value over there. So I guess maybe a better way to have drawn this would be like this, where I'll just slide this over to the right by one. So now we can just put a zero here. We can check this is a vowel, like begins and ends like that. So we'll put a one here. And now for this one, it's not a vowel, but we're not going to put zero here. We're going to take the previous value and add to it zero, since this is not beginning and ending with a vowel. So we'll have one here. This is, so 1 plus 1 is 2. This also is, 2 plus 1 is 3. This also is, 3 plus 1 is 4. Now for us to build the output array answering each query, let me just draw a little array of size 3. For this query, which actually does begin from the beginning, it's this. So what we would do is take this value, which is 2. That tells us how many of these words are valid and subtract from it the value over here, which there's no words to subtract. So we'll get a 2 to answer that query. For this query, it's going to go uh, from 1 all the way to the end. So this value, and then from here, we'll subtract from it that value because we don't want to include this. 4 minus 1 is 3. So I'll put a 3 here. Last one, this query over here, or sorry, I think it's this one. And so that's one, subtract from it the value to the left because we don't want to include here. So one minus one, that's going to be zero. So you can see it works pretty efficient, linear time, linear space solution. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of get the vowels that we're dealing with. So I'll call it a vowel set and well, actually, yeah, let's uh, do that vowel set and then I'll pass in a string A, E, I, O, U. This will just give me a string taking each of these or rather a set taking each of these and adding it to the hash set. Then I want to create my prefix array. I'll call it prefix count. It'll be an array of all zeros and the length will be the length of the words plus one. And then we want to populate it going through each word in the input of words. So in Python, I like to do this. I W in enumerate. If you don't know these little Python tricks, you might be interested in my Python for coding interviews course, or maybe you're not. Um, either way, what we want to know for this particular word, is it a vowel or not? And if it was a vowel, this is what we would do. We'd say prefix count at I plus one. Remember, we're kind of doing that offset because we want to look to the right of the current word. And we would set it to be the previous one at prefix count at index i and add to it either one or add to it zero, depending on if the current word is of like beginning and ending with a vowel. So let's just get that. Let's call that v. Is it a vowel or not? I'll set that to zero initially. And then I'll say this. If the first character of the word is in the vowel set and the last character in the word, which conveniently in Python you can get with negative one, is in the vowel set, then we can increment this by one. We could have also done this with like a ternary operator. I just think it would have been kind of unreadable since this is like two conditions, but it's up to you. And then here we can then add to this V because it's either going to be zero or one, and that's good. This code actually can be made a little bit more concise rather than just taking the previous value. We could just store it temporarily like in a variable. Let's just call it previous. Let's initially set it to zero. And then we uh, don't even need uh, this anymore. And then if this condition is true, what we can do is take previous and increment that by one. Whoops. And then for the prefix, like since this is now the correct value, we can just set that here, set that to previous, and then we're good. This is already updated for the next iteration. 
this optimization doesn't really matter. I just know if I didn't mention it, there's going to be at least one person in the comments saying you can make it shorter, which is fine. If you guys do think of like better ways to write it up, you can always copy and paste your code into the comments. Maybe people will find that helpful. Okay, now to actually answer the queries, we're going to have an array of results. It's all zeros. It's going to be the length of the input queries array. And then we're going to return it. Before we do that, we should populate it. So for each query, I'm going to do this for IQ in enumerate the queries. We're going to unpack the query, the left and right boundaries of it. And now the result at index I will simply be the uh, prefix count from right plus one. Remember that plus one comes from the fact that we do have an offset subtracted by prefix of left because if left was zero, we would want the prefix to always be zero. That's why we start at i plus one. That first zero will always be there. That's pretty much the whole code. Let me just run it to make sure I don't have any bugs. Of course I do. And of course, it's always a typo. Maybe I should have just called that array prefix. I forgot the underscore count. But now you can see that it does work and it's very efficient. If you found this helpful, I think you'll also enjoy some of the content on neatcode.io. I made some updates to like the big O notation uh, crash course here. And all of these things, like this part is completely free if you check it out on a neatcode.io. I think you'll find it useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you pretty soon.